Welcome back everyone to the Sea Science Series with Ireland's Marine Institute. My name is Mark. My name is Saoirse. And we've been discovering the importance of our oceans, which if you missed it, you can check out in episode one. Let's do a quick fire speed roundup of what we've discovered so far. Okay, that sounds like a good plan. Okay, the ocean. Makes Earth habitable. Covers 70% of the Earth's surface. It provides us with food. Produces over half the oxygen we breathe. Ooh, it's home to marine life and ecosystems. Oh. It transports an enormous amount of heat around the world. And therefore regulates our climate and weather. Deadly. Is largely unexplored. A source of renewable energy. Is responsible for the water cycle. So the ocean is super important. Okay, that was really fun. Let's kick off episode two with some awesome ocean Okay, um, the deepest part of the ocean is called the Mariana Trench in the Pacific Ocean. Ooh, and the deepest part of the deepest part of the ocean is known as the Challenger Deep. How deep? 11 kilometres. The longest mountain range in the world is the Mid-Oceanic Ridge, a chain of mountains at the bottom of the ocean. The ocean is home to the world's largest living structure, the Great Barrier Reef off the coast of Australia. Yeah, Ireland is, has a marine seabed that is 10 times the size of the island of Ireland. Ooh, and get this, in 1992, over 28,000 rubber ducks fell into the Pacific Ocean after a shipping container overturned. Oh God! I sure listen. But don't worry, they've been found washed up on beaches all across the world. Thank Jesus. In episode one, we built a model of the ocean and seen how ocean currents form and how they move warm and cold water around our planet, which helps regulate the temperature of the planet and helps transport nutrients and marine life around too. Nice. We learned that ocean currents are caused by a range of sources and that there are two types of ocean currents. Surface currents caused by winds and the rotation of the earth and deep water currents caused by the differences in water density. Ah, I think we should investigate what affects water density a bit further and see how it influences ocean currents. You'll need two similar jars. You can use small ones like this, but we're going to use big ones like this. You will also need some food coloring, some water, some salt, and a spoon. You also need some thick card or plastic that's larger than the opening of the jars. You'll also need a tray for possible spillages. And some towels for some cleanup. First, let's investigate the effect of temperature on water density. Fill one jar to the top with cold water and add some blue food coloring. This is our cold ocean water like that at the polar ice caps. Fill the other jar with warm water and add some red food colouring. This is our warm water, like that at the equator. Place the card on top of the warm water and then turn the jar upside down and place it on top of the cold water. So we have the warm water on the top and the cold water on the bottom. What do we think will happen when I remove the card? It will explode! <laughs> Let's see. Nothing happens. That looks cool, doesn't it? <laughs> the cold water stays on the bottom and the warm water stays on the top. This time, let's try it again, but let's place the warm water on the bottom and the cold water on the top. What do you think will happen this time? It will implode! <laughs> <laughs> the warm water starts rising upwards. As water is heated, it expands and becomes less dense. Things that are less dense float on things that are more dense. The warm water rises very quickly and the cold water sinks. And as they do that, the food colouring mixes. In our oceans, warm water at the equator rises and travels towards the poles, where it gets cold and more dense and sinks to the bottom. The sinking cold water travels along the bottom towards the equator, where it warms up and rises again. This circular motion is called thermohaline circulation. Thermo meaning heat and haline meaning salinity, which is how salty the water is. So we've just seen how the temperature affects density. So let's discover how the salinity affects the density of water. As we know, our oceans contain a vast amount of salty water. This time, fill one jar with salty water, and you can do this by adding salt to your water. <music> fill
fill the other with fresh water from the tap. <laughs> You'll also need some food coloring. And your card again. Let's dye our salt water green and label it too. And let's dye our fresh water yellow so we can track their movements. Place the card on top of the salt water jar and put it on top of the fresh water. What will happen when I remove the card? Let's see. Wow! <laughs> the salt water sinks to the bottom and the fresh water rises to the top. Salt water is more dense than fresh water, so it sinks. Fresh water is less dense than salt water, so it rises to the top. And as we've seen, things that are less dense float on things that are more dense. In our oceans, as water moves towards the poles, it gets colder. It also gets saltier because <laughs> when sea ice forms, only the water freezes and the salt gets left behind in the surrounding water, making it saltier. As we've seen, salty water is denser and sinks. Mm. So we have cold, salty water at the poles sinking because it's more dense and warm water rising at the equator because it's less dense. And the movement of these currents form a circular motion, thermohaline circulation, heat and salt. You can have more fun with liquids of different densities to make a density tower like this. I'm using honey. Next up is the washing up liquid. Pour it in slowly, using the back of the spoon to help you. Next is the water with food colouring. Nice and slow. Then the vegetable oil. And finally the baby oil. The less dense liquids float on top of the denser liquids. We've done it again, but this time place the salty, dense water on the bottom and the less dense fresh water on the top. Very cool. Yeah. It looks absolutely awesome. The Marine Institute operates many platforms at sea, such as offshore buoys, Quack. autonomous floats and vehicles, and ship-based measurements to measure ocean temperature and salinity, as well as sea level, waves, oxygen, carbon, nutrients, and ocean currents. This data is used to forecast ocean conditions in the next few days, as well as how our oceans will change in the next few decades. The Marine Institute's annual Ocean Climate Research Survey monitors deep water environments to the west of Ireland. The survey takes place on board the research vessel, the Celtic Explorer. Based in Galway, the Celtic Explorer is over 65 metres long, with wet and dry labs and a team of scientists on board with equipment for researching, exploring and tracking changes in our oceans. Sounds absolutely awesome. Yeah. You can join us in the next episode in our dry lab, unless, uh, <laughs> unless this spills, where we'll be investigating changes in our oceans due to climate change. Bye! <clears throat> <clears throat> oh, sorry guys. Bye. Bye. Good luck. See you know. What's going on? <laughs>